Hello and welcome to the Boomstick Gaming Review for the supernatural, gravity-defying action adventure through the corridors of Control. Is Jessie truly the ultimate task manager after becoming the director of the Shady Bureau, or does her control require an alt delete? Control is primarily a narrative-driven third-person shooter at its core, which leans quite heavily on gravity-manipulating abilities as well as some open-ended exploration. The gunplay is very solid, allowing you to morph your weapon into various other forms that makes up the entirety of your arsenal in one very flexible little pistol. There is no ammo in the game, however, and you must place your shots well or risk being left out in the open with your weapon having to recharge. This was a smart design choice because 1. I am a firm believer that no one ever really has fun running out of ammo and having to pick up more, and 2. This requires the player to naturally bounce back and forth between firing their gun and utilizing their inhuman abilities that they gain throughout their adventure. Picking up and throwing office decor, oncoming projectiles, and even enemies themselves is quite seamless to pull off mid-battle. Even if there are no physical objects in sight to pick up, concrete is usually in abundance everywhere you travel, which can be ripped from the environment itself to be used as a deadly projectile, turning you into a slightly less impressive magneto. Some enemies you fight will even have shield barriers that encourage you to use the powers at your disposal rather than just slowly shipping away with raw gunfire. Other abilities are gained along the way that primarily expand the fundamentals of combat, and although Control is touted as having some Metroidvania-style elements, this is true, but they often do not revolve around the unique abilities you gain, and instead function mostly off an accumulating clearance level value assigned to some locked doors. This is not to say your newfound powers never allow you to seek out new locations, but I found the Metroidvania exploration to be somewhat barren and simplistic, resulting in only really finding a near endless supply of crafting materials and character mods, which I will be getting back to here in a moment. The core story of Control revolves around your sudden involvement with the elusive Bureau as you try to piece together the mysteries of the brain-controlling Hiss. If you've played previous Remedy games like Quantum Break or Alan Wake, you'll probably have a good idea on how the overall story unfolds through strange environmental set pieces, direct one-on-one -on -one conversations, their favorite immersion-breaking real-life video footage, and enough lore documents to easily drown in. I will not be mentioning any further details about the story from here on out to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, but if you found Remedy's previous works to be intriguing, you will more than likely find something to latch onto here, but if you find their style to be a little heavy-handed, luckily you can get right back out into the action fairly quickly between these story beats. Doesn't the timing seem suspicious? I thought that too. Dr. Darling usually likes to unveil his latest breakthrough in big presentations. With these, he just passed them out. Yeah, his behavior makes me wonder what exactly he knew. The primary character progression and control revolves around showering the player in weapon and character mods that do somewhat improve your core stats, but that is mainly all these are, just marginal statistical improvements in loot form. Some of these do slightly alter how the guns fire, which I would have honestly liked to see more of. These mods are not a complete letdown, nor an invigorating exploration motivator, but they do get the job done at injecting a small dose of RPG elements into the game. You also have a fairly straightforward skill tree that helps to give you a little more agency over your loadout, but again are mostly just slight statistical improvements outside a few core nodes that alter certain abilities. The other primary collectible in the game are resources which can be used to create new forms for your gun or to improve a pre-existing one. If these resources are not needed for those upgrades, you can dump them into the Astral Construct system that allows you to generate randomized mods of your own, which feels somewhat ripped straight from the microtransaction playbook, but at this time is luckily just bound to the game's currency itself, and not your wallet. All of these elements combined are your prime incentive to venture off the beaten path and control, but are they a worthy motivator? Somewhat, but I would have liked a bit more out of the exploration.
Control is an amazing third-person action shooter that is a spectacle to behold when its combat is firing on all cylinders that is only limited by its somewhat anemic core systems and hit-and-miss storytelling. If you go into Control with the right frame of mind, you will definitely enjoy the tightly crafted psychological journey that Remedy has laid out for you. Now here's the part of the review where I hand you the hypothetical controller to give you a feel for the overall controls to hopefully convey somewhat how the game feels to play for all those fellow gameplay focused gamers out there. Overall, control feels above average to, well, control, with aiming your weapon being near flawless with only a small amount of what feels like some light smoothing. You can easily toggle the alternate form of your weapon with the press of a button. It's not a instantaneous switch, but still perfectly quick enough to switch out mid-firefight. You also have a quick evade that can be performed on the ground or in the air, pretty straightforward. The melee attack looks pretty cool, but unless you pump some stats into it, not incredibly powerful. Now the crouch is interesting here in Control because you can't crouch and shoot at the same time. You can use this to peek over ledges, but as soon as you actually start firing, you are forced to stay standing. I'm not going to be showcasing every ability you get here, but a large element to the core late game combat revolves around your ability to float. Lastly, your telekinetic powers allow you to easily pull and throw nearly everything in the environment, and the game will even subtly highlight what you're going to pull. Even if you're not perfectly highlighting something, the game does a pretty good job at usually pulling something every time you press this button, even if your aim is not spot on. Many things in the environment deal different amounts of damage when thrown, so just play around with what you can pull. And with that, that concludes the control section, and this is easily my favorite Remedy game in terms of raw fluidity. If you happen to enjoy my style of review, or feel I've helped you make a more informed purchasing decision at any time, consider subscribing to the channel, clicking that little bell icon if you already are, and following me on Twitter at BoomstickAlex. If you want to go a little further, check out the perks I provide to my YouTube members and patrons, who just like these awesome top supporters right here, help to directly improve and maintain my channel from month to month. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching.